हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज सुवर्णा एंड वेलकम टू माई चैनल लेट्स मेरा कल टूडे वी विल सी जर्नी थ्रू टाइम क्लास सेवेंथ चैप्टर नंबर वन द रिवल्यूशन ऑफ मेडिवल इंडिया सो इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल लर्न अबाउट नवन क्लेचर ऑफ इंडिया सोर्सेस फॉर रिकन्स्ट्रक्टिंग हिस्ट्री पॉलिटिकल डिवलपमेंट्स इकोनॉमिकल डिवलपमेंट्स रिलीजियस डिवलपमेंट्स एंड सोशल डिवलपमेंट्स सो लेट स्टार्ट सो यर इज द पिक्चर ऑफ द कॉइन ऑफ फाइव रुपीज सो एनालाइज दिस कॉइन इन डिटेल what information do you obtain from this coin discuss in a groups so here we could see there is a coin of 5 rupees which is having of a golden color the national emblem is there rupees 5 symbol is there bharat and india is printed the name of the country the same way the back side also we can see there is a goddess picture is given same the name of the goddess is given so this way we can discuss about the same coin and if we go through the different coins we are getting different information so the coins are also the sources of information of the history so let's learn the term medieval is derived from the latin word medium evum meaning relating or belonging to the middle age the history of india is divided into the ancient medieval and modern periods the medieval period is the one that lies between the ancient and the modern periods the medieval period of Indian history broadly extends from the 8th century CE to the 18th century CE events from the medieval period had a profound impact on every walk of life be it polity society religion culture and economy the entire period is further subdivided into the early medieval that is 700 ce to 1200 ce is the early medieval period and 1200 ce to 1750 ce is the later medieval period nomenclature of india what is nomenclature of india so let's see here the republic of india was known by varied names at different points in history during ancient time bharat varsha or land of bharatas and jambu dwip were some of the names used to refer india india was known as hind and hindustan around 11th century c to the persian and the arabs further the rulers of delhi sultanate and the mughal empire began to call their indian territory as hindustan however the meaning of hindustan during medieval period was significantly different from what we understood today minhaj a siraj a medieval scholar used the term hindustan in the 13th century to describe the areas of modern punjab haryana and the land between two rivers the ganga and the yamuna which were a part of delhi sultanate in the early 16th century emperor babur used the term hindustan to denote the geography the natural vegetation and the culture of the inhabitants of the subcontinent it was during the british raj that hindustan became synonymous with india 
the present day name india was given to the country by the greeks it is derived from the greek word indoe meaning the region beyond the river indus or sindhu the sanskrit name of the river they use the name of the indus river to name the region so let's see a rapid round what is the meaning of the term medieval so here we see that the term medieval is derived from the latin word medium am which is meaning related or belonging to the middle age next question is mention two ancient names of india so just now we have seen ancient name of india's are bharatvarsh or jambu dweep or bharat and also known as a hind or hindustan in the 11th century ce next question is that what is the sanskrit name of the river indus so the sanskrit name of indus was sindhu next sources for reconstructing history so here we see that there are the important sources through that we collect the information about the history history is the study of past to study the past historians depends on a variety of sources sources differ according to the period of the study and the nature of their investigation the characteristics of ancient medieval and modern period differ significantly and are based on the changes they underwent hence the source materials of these three periods also differ historians have to be careful while studying the sources in order to draw accurate facts for the purpose of study sources of the medieval period are divided into two types archaeological sources and literary sources so let's see archaeological sources the scientific study of the medieval the scientific study of the materials remains on the past is known as archaeology the archaeological sources include temples forts palaces mosques tombs utensils weapons coins inscriptions sculptures and paintings they give us an insight into the political social economical religious and cultural history of the period and that inscription inscriptions are treasure house of historical data they are found in various languages and scripts scattered all over india they provide provide valuable information such as the royal proclamations religious inscriptions and the details of grants given there are innumerable inscriptions found on the temple walls beside the stone inscription several copper plate inscriptions belonging to the medieval period have been discovered grants issued by kings such as krishna dev rai were recorded on copper plates these are extremely useful to construct the history of the vijayanagar empire next is coin coins are of a great help to study the medieval period or the writings on the coin gives information about the language and the scripts names of kings titles dates of issue place of issue and the emblem of the dynasties the depictions of deities on coins furnish information about the religious policy and personal religious faith of the kings 
coins are often taken to study the type of metals used artistic skills economic prosperity trade and financial condition of the period sculptures sculptures are another important archaeological source of the period a critical analysis of sculptures would help us to know about the growth and development of the socio cultural history of the period painting was another art form and that was encouraged by the medieval kings the paintings exhibit various aspects of medieval period such as the prevalent customs traditions food habits jewelry dresses etc on the time we can find a large number of monuments and buildings belonging to the medieval period each dynasty has its own architectural style many south indian rulers encouraged temple buildings these historical monuments speaks about the grandeur architectural skills economic affluence culture and religious belief of the period rapid round let's see first one is history is the study of past name the two types of sources so there are two types of sources of studying histories are archaeological sources and literary sources next question is that is coin an archaeological source yes so the coin is a archaeological source next is literary sources so there is a no date of historical records on medieval india paper gradually become cheaper and easily available during this period hence a large number of literary sources are available literary sources include code chronicles chronicles biographies autobiographies accounts of foreign travelers correspondence of the kings and the court records many of these records are placed in the libraries and archives chronicles so what are the chronic chronic a uh, chronicles is a historical record of events arranged in a chronological order in the name itself we understand chronic what will be them so it is in a chronological order a continuous chronological record of major events is available because most of the monarchs employed court chronicles who maintain profuse records of the activities happening during this reign most of the literary records are found in persian turkish sanskrit and many other languages some of the well known chronicles of the medieval period are as follows tabakat in nasri by minhaj us siraz is general history of the islamic world and is named after the reigning sultan nasruddin muhammad tarikh e firut shahi by ziauddin babri a significant historical work which narrates the history of delhi sultanate raj tarangini by kalan is foremost among the chronicles in sanskrit it deals with the history of kashmir muntakav at tarikh by ab al qadir badawni is written in three volumes it throws light on the reign of babar humayun and akbar alamgir by mirza mohammad qasim is an official history of the first 10 years of aurangzeb's reign 
autobiography autobiographies and biographies the most important autobiographies of the period are fatuhat e firoz shahi by firoz shah tughlaq tuzu ki babri aur babarnama by babar tuzu ki jahangiri by jahangir some of the examples of biographies are as follow prithviraj raso by chand bardai is a great source of study of struggle between rajputs and mohammad guri his work is also of immense help in understanding life before the establishment of the turkish story humain nama by gulbadan begum is significant to study uh, reign of mughal emperor jahangir aini e akbari by abul fazl furnishes information about an administrative system of emperor akbar's empire accounts of foreign travelers foreign travelers who visited india during the medieval period have left very valuable information regarding the political social and economical conditions of india ibn babuda was one such a traveler who wrote detailed information of his travels under the title rela the travel log it cont- it contains very useful accounts of geographical judicial judicial political military inscriptions as well as social and economical constit- conditions of india domingo piz and doret barbosas both portuguese who visited vijayanagar city and have left the eyewitness accounts of the splendor of vijayanagar city the king the common people and the trade are at a commerce abdur razak travel accounts are also very useful to study the history of vijayanagar the work of several other european travelers such as marco polo nicolo conti and nicolo menuci all italians captain william hawkins sir thomas roe and ralph fitch all english bernier and tavernier both french I have also made reference about india and its people in their travel accounts so study nicolo county visited vijayanagar about the year of 1420 or 1421 ce he described the city in the following words so nicolo county has described the vijayanagar city let's see the great city of bizinglia is situated near very steep mountains the circumference of the city is 60 miles its wall are carried up to the mountains and enclose the valleys at their foot so that is exist its extent so that its extent is thereby increased in this city there are estimated to be 90000 men to fit to bear arms excerpt taken from a short history of muslim rule of india by ishwari prasad analyze the given excerpt and share your observation in the class indigenous literature we also have noteworthy indigenous literature written in different languages such as sanskrit bengali hindi marathi tamil etc 
The literature composed by the Bhakti and Sufi saint was primarily in the local languages providing ample of scope for the historians to understand the existing religion and society. Tulsi Das's Ramcharit Namas is an important literary work to study the cultural history of the medieval period. So, rapid round let's see who is the chronicler of Raj Tarangini. So, the chronicler of Raj Tarangini is Kalam. Who has written Fawad E. Firoz Shahi? Fatuat E. Firoz Shahi is written by Firoz Shah Tughlaq. Which country was Domingo Peace from? Domingo Peace is from Portuguese. That is Portugal. Next we see political development. The medieval period of Indian history witnessed the rise and fall of several dynasties. The period marks the struggle of power between regional powers such as Pratiharas and Rashtrakutas and Palas and Cholas. During this period, a group of people known as Rajputs rose to prominence. They belong to the Kshatriya clan. The, le the later medieval period begins with the in invention of Muhammad of Ghazni followed by Muhammad Ghori. The arrival of the Turks laid the foundation of Delhi Sultanate. Disintegration of the Delhi Sultanate led to the emergence of Mughal Empire and various kingdoms in different parts of the country. The other politically dominant power includes the Vijayanagar Kingdom as well as Marathas, Shikhas, Jats, Ohomas, etc. Feudalism or the development of granting lands to nobles, nobles by the rulers who in return would get tributes and military help was a significant feature of medieval India. Economic development The political turbulence of the medieval period brought change in economic life too. Land revenue being an important source of state revenue. Medieval rulers made effort to asset it more systematically. Growth of trade and commerce helped to develop new towns and cities as the significant centers of administration and trade. The people who came from outside India introduced new elements in the field of technology. For example, the Persian wheel in irrigation, the Spanish wheel in weaving and firm firearms in combats. They brought several new food items such as potatoes, corns, chilies, tea and coffee with them. Religious Development Religion played a very dominant role in medieval period. The period witnessed the advent of Islam a revival of Hindu Hinduism. Many religious reformers in the form of Bhakti and Supi movements. Further, the birth of Sikhism was another major development of the period. Social development. The developments in every sphere of life had its profound impact on the medieval society too. The society was largely divided into aristocrats priests, peasants, traders, nobility, officers and soldiers, etc. Unique development of art and architecture gave birth to a new group of people called craftsmen and artisans and artisans. A number of subcasts 
such as goldsmith potter weavers musicians etc forty forty fear they were grouped into subcaste jatis now most of the workers were classified as untouchables there were also various tribal communities scattered all over india the position of women deteriorated during the medieval period in human practices such as child marriage polygamy sati etc had worsened the life of women in spite of these conditions some women possessed considerable power but that was largely restricted to the ruling class or upper class the journey was not easy for them to women such as rajya sultan rani durgavati etc have fought against all odds and left their marks on the history of medieval india let's see rapid round which clan did rajput belongs to so the rajput belongs to the kshatriya clan what was the important source of state revenue during the medieval period land revenue is important source of state revenue in medieval period next is who introduced new elements in the field of technology so in the technology so the people who came from outside india introduced new element in the field of technology next who have left the mark in the journey of medieval period domingo pez and durate barbosos the portuguese who have left the mark in the history of medieval india so women such as rajya sultan rani durgavati etc have fought against all odds and left their marks on the history of medieval india hope so you like the video if you like the video please do like share 